Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Follow Your Passion. Let me introduce my guest of today. His name is Louis Schenk. Uh, Louis started his entrepreneurial journey in 2018 in the events branch. When COVID hit, all events were cancelled and he knew he had to pivot his business and build a future-proof company. This led to the launch of Boost Media Agency in 2020. And two years later, the company has served over 1,500 clients globally by leveraging the untapped potential of PR. Welcome, Lewis. How are you doing? Fantastic, Owen. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really yeah. excited to dive in. So, Lewis, tell me about it. Um, did you always have this entrepreneurial um, aspirations? No, I didn't. So I I was very much driven by a more away from, you know, meaning. I I knew when I was in school, I, I will never forget, I would sit there in school and I would dread the thought of, you know, year 10, then year 12 being over, then university being over, where I have to go and enter the real world and, you know, get in a suit and tie every day and go and sit in a cubicle like that. That scared the life out of me. And so it wasn't so much I was like driven to be an entrepreneur. It was like, well, I knew what I didn't want. So yeah, for me, it was more not not knowing what I wanted, but knowing what I really didn't want that that kind of shaped those decisions. Yeah, yeah it's it's funny that you say that because it's very hard for people to to really uh, know what they want. You know, if you ask people what they want, they they have no hard time telling you what they don't want, right? Just like you said, but what they really want that that's really an exploration as well. So. Your first business was about the events brands. How did you come to that? Yeah, it was really uh, kind of another opportunity meets preparation. So it was back in 2017 where I was at university. I was playing golf at a, you know, a relatively high level. And I, I saw an ad on Facebook and it was like, you know, for waiters for this events company. And anyway, called them up and said, hey, uh, you know, I'd love to work for you guys. Long story short, I saw my work ethic and like I was pretty switched on and, they were starting a new business at the end of that year. And so they, they asked me, Hey, do you want to, you know, pretty much run our business do all the sales marketing. And it was so far out of my depth that I was like, Hey, hundred percent, let's do it. And so these guys basically trained me to run their whole business. And, you know, I spent four years at university doing a degree of bachelor of entrepreneurship. And I learned so much more in the first month of working for these guys. Like I had no idea when I was in university, what a leads list is, how to send like a, you know, a professional email, how to call someone like, you know, I, I had no idea, but from doing that, it was like, it was so simple. And so when you understand the fundamentals from experience, then you can just take them to, you know, your own venture, which I did. And then when I set up the next company, same thing. So yeah, I learned the skill from, from really doing it. Yeah. Nice. And I think that's the best way of learning it, right? It's learning by doing and mm -hmm. your, um, did you make a lot of mistakes when you started out i mean nothing huge but you know what it's like you look back to where you were two years ago and like the types of content you were making and the way that you kind of you know articulated the messaging of the company and you kind of cringe a bit like god i sucked i really sucked <laughs> back then so yeah there was nothing nothing huge mistake wise but yeah just those little things that you know you just get better at by by the repetitions by just you know time under the bar just doing yeah. it for you know Years exactly. and you look back and you're like, wow, I've come a long way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the reason I'm asking is because a lot of people are afraid of making mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. But when you make a mistake, those are the best learnings. You know, you do something you haven't done before. You know, it's the first time you're, it's logical when you make a mistake because you're doing it for the first time. But it's all about the learnings, you know, that's how you grow and how you develop yourself. And it's what you said, you know, it, it's learning by doing, you know, you're bound to make mistakes, but that's okay. You know, as long as you don't do it twice and you learn from it. Mm -hmm. So exactly when, when COVID hits you, you knew, you know, that, that you had to build a future proof company, uh, and you came to boost, uh, media agency. How, how did you make this, uh, transition from the events branch towards the uh, public relationships, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So it, to me, this just proves the power of having a really good network. So one of my best friends, uh, he li was living in Canada at the time and he, he essentially got into business a few years before me and got into sales, different roles. And then he ended up starting a sales agency where they were basically building sales teams for companies. 
And there was a PR company based over in Oregon in the United States. And they were looking for a couple of, you know, sales development representatives. And he's like, hey, man, you want to, you know, just give this a try. I think PR is something that is really cool. And, it, you know, you might be interested in doing it. And so he gave me that opportunity. And like, as soon as I started working for this other company, I was like, wow, this is so exciting and cool. Like, I instantly saw the power of it and like how it could be leveraged for, you know, small businesses. And yeah, I basically took those couple of months just to study the business in and out, kind of like I did with that events company. And then, yeah, went and did my own thing because I was like, well, I know how to run a business. I'm not going to make, you know, 15% when I can make all of it. <laughs> yeah, nice. So there's there's been a few discussions, you know, about uh, sales, marketing, branding, and PR. How would you define PR in relationships to branding and marketing? Yeah, well, by definition, public relations is essentially the image that you hold with the public, right? So, yeah, it, it's kind of vague in that sense, but it's just how you're presented to the world. Like an example that I always give is, you know, you can go into LinkedIn, for example, and you could see, you know, two business owners, same business, you know, same kind of experience. You look at one of them, they've been on all these awesome podcasts, they host a podcast themselves. They might write for an industry publication like Entrepreneur Magazine. They have a ton of really great content, right? Then the other one, you know, they haven't really posted much. They've never done any podcasts. They haven't been in any kind of media. And, you know, all those things that that first person I mentioned has done are just building their profile and building their brand, right? All the yeah. biggest brands in the world do all those things. And so, yeah, it's really about how you can position yourself in the market because, you know, every industry is more saturated than ever. And if you don't do something to stand out, then, you know, your competitors are literally just going to be stealing your customers. So it's like, how can you leverage these, you know, powerful tools to build your brand? And yeah, that's kind of how I define PR. Nice. So it's, if I would summarize it, that PR is actually the shortcut to building a brand, right? To, to become authority yeah, yeah. in your own field and, and be recognized for that. Yeah. Spot on. Nice. Nice. And um, so would you say you're leading by example, you know, that you built your own brand as well? Or are you, uh, as many might say, your own worst customer? That That's a really, yeah, that's an interesting one. Because at the start, I was building my brand. I was like, you know, I was just putting heaps of time doing it. And then there was a period of probably six to 12 months I really dropped off. Like, you know what it's like when you're building a business and like, you know, it's yourself or maybe one or two people helping you out and you just don't have the time to do that. But it was really at the start of this year that I, I like to say, turned the content marketing machine on. So basically just, yeah, being as aggressive as possible in terms of like the amount of, you know, podcasts we're getting on, the amount of, you know, different content we're putting out, different platforms. So yeah, because it's, it's really crazy nowadays that, you know, you know, short form video, right? You could post one video to one platform and get 20,000 views you can post that same video onto the next platform and it could get 50,000 views. And so this one video that took you two minutes to make can reach hundreds of thousands of people. That being said, not every video is going to, you know, go viral or do that great, but it's, it's incredibly powerful that you can just repurpose these across all the channels and just build that brand awareness because, you know, money follows attention. The more people that know you, the more people that like you and the more people that trust you, the more people that are going to do business with you. So yeah, yeah it's, it was really the start of this year that I, I said I took it very, very seriously. Yeah, and I, th I, I think that, that you just mentioned uh, a, a very important thing is repurposing, right? A lot of people, uh, they might do an interview um, and I'm guilty of that as well. You know, I have several interviews, but repurposing um, is not on everybody's, uh, within everybody's view, right? So then... They're, they're posting it once and hoping to get some some leverage from that. But repurposing is actually the way to make it more consistent, Would you, wouldn't you say? Definitely. And you said a great word there, leverage, right? The ability to shoot one podcast and repurpose that into 30 clips that can get seen by, you know, 10,000 people. That's leverage right there, right? You do this once and then it's off on YouTube, it's on all these platforms and so... Yeah, there's a lot of leverage when it comes to content. And I think it's a good lens to look through it. Like, you know, because some people don't like, you know, getting on video or putting content and stuff out there. But, you know, with what we're mentioning here, short form video, like, yeah, you just have insane leverage. Nice, nice. So you're based in Australia. You're helping people uh, globally. Um, 
you've already helped over 1500 uh, clients, you know, and that's an amazing number. Is there a particular case that comes to mind that you're very proud of or that had some, some major success that you didn't expect at the beginning? Yeah, so two things popped to mind. The first one is a very selfish one and it was it was my first ever client in this business. And, you know, to me, that was just like, because I had the events company, you know, we're doing pretty decent, but then like, you know, it's very cliche that you hear about all these people like, you know, you can make money just working online and like, until you actually do it yourself, you don't know that's a hundred percent possible. And so that for me was like a huge success, just like, you know, proof of concept. And then secondly, there was like a, a tech startup that we're working with. And like, it wasn't until I sent them a survey, like a month and a half later, just like asking them, you know, how was the experience? So we had them featured in one, like, you know, industry specific publication. They got over 200 wait list signups and raised like $150,000 in funding from that wow. one piece. And I was like, wow, why the hell didn't you tell me about this sooner? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess they were just too busy. But yeah, that one stood to mind. Another client, Allison, like, you know, when you can get, I always, I don't sell like what we do is like, hey, we're going to generate you a ton of new leads, right? Because that's, that's not the full purpose of what we do. A lot of the benefit is indirect, right? Some of our clients, I'll get emails like, hey, Lewis, I had two people find me last month in an article that, you know, we did six months ago, because people are searching for what that person does. And one of our clients, it was really good timing. So you're not getting like over 30 like bookings in a calendar within a week, all just from one, you know, targeted PR campaign. So yeah, those three are the ones that, that spring to mind the most. Nice. Nice. And if you look at your own company, um, how do you see it evolve in the coming years? You know, you started it two years ago, so you know what's possible. Um, did you already have like a vision where you want to be in five years time or is it evolving while you're doing it? It's really evolving while I'm doing it, but it's getting clearer. Like I want to become synonymous with personal branding. I don't want to, I don't want to be a PR agency. Like, you know, a lot of them get a bad rap in the sense that they move really slow. You know, we've had a lot of clients move from other agencies to us because they didn't like the way the other companies worked. And so we're really focusing on the personal brand side of it, right? Like the founders of companies, you know, typically the one to 20 employee range, because at that point, the founder is the biggest lead generation tool for the business, right? In the online B2B, B2C space. Because, you know, if you get a, a DM from a company page or if you connect with another person, you're far more likely to talk to the person, right? Just because of that that human touch, that human connection. So, yeah, yeah, where I see the company going is becoming synonymous with personal branding. So whatever that involves at the time, there might be the next thing might replace short form video and it might be something else. So, We've, it's our job to kind of stay up to date with that and just continue to, you know, serve our clients at the highest level with that. Nice. So you're actually looking for the, the new Steve Jobs and the Elon Musks of this world, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that would be <laughs> nice to, to work with someone like that. But yeah, it's because that that's a great example as well. Those people, not everyone would think about it like this, but they were great brand builders for themselves, right? Even like, I don't know if you mentioned Elon Musk then, but Elon, Jeff, Yep. Bezos, um, Steve Jobs, everyone associates their name with the company. It's not just this logo. Like not many people would know Coca-Cola, right? Who who oh, founded yeah. Coca-Cola? I have no idea. But these other guys have done a really great job at getting, you know, a public profile, which people develop an affinity for them. Like Elon is a god on Twitter. People love him. He posts these ridiculous things that, you know, people would think, God, how could a you know billion, multi-billionaire CEO post, you know, things like that. But like, it just shows that like, you know, when you have that much, you know, power and I think belief in what you do, you just don't care. Elon, Elon really doesn't care what people think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So, um, would you say that, that building a brand is important in every business? Or are there certain businesses that it's even more important? To the best of my knowledge, I would say every single business, you know, regardless if it's a personal brand or you're actually just building the brand of the business, because the brand is why people say yes. Like to, to define, like I, I heard this really great definition on LinkedIn a few months ago. The definition, sorry, the difference between marketing and branding. Marketing is like asking someone out on a date and the branding is the reason why people say yes, right? All these people are getting asked out on dates. Hey, buy my product. Hey, buy my product. Hey, buy my product. Right? But why do people pick one versus the other? 
it's often an affinity to the brand. Yeah. So I, I, I was trying to think of a business that wouldn't benefit from it. The only kind of thing I can think of is maybe like a garbage disposal company that, you know, just has government contracts because they probably don't care. But I think in the modern world of business where things are so, you know, in the public eye, everything's on social media. Yeah, pretty much every single business needs to yeah. have, you know, a strong brand. Yeah, it's actually funny that you, that you mentioned this quote because uh, I saw this also with, with some of my connections. They said, you know, that marketing is uh, asking somebody out of on a date and branding is the reason they say yes. And mm-hmm. I kind of tweaked it, you know. I said, sales is asking somebody on a date. Marketing is the reason they say yes. And branding is the reason they're waiting for you to ask them on a date. Wow, I like that. That's powerful. Yeah. Adding a layer. Yeah, you know, and it's, um, if you're thinking about uh, big brands, you know, it, it's uh, one of the things is, for instance, uh, Ferrari, you know, the, the car brand, mm-hmm. they don't need to do a lot of, they've built such a brand for themselves that their marketing is only introducing a new uh, new car. And when people walk into a showroom, it's not a question if they're buying, either they're they're admiring the car or they're ready to buy. You know, you don't have to do any sales. It's more, which one do you want? And I think that's the power of branding, you know, that that it's not the question if people want to work with you. It's more that it, can people afford it to work with you? And right. I think if you build such a brand, you know, like like in the coaching industry, uh, Tony Robbins is a great example, of course, you know. Every time mm-hmm. Tony goes out, I don't think there has to be a lot of marketing for his events. You know, they're mm-hmm. just putting in one campaign. Uh, then is it, it's there. And if you want to be there, buy the ticket. And that's like all there is. <laughs> You know, people Correct. are buying it because they want to be there. They want to be part of it. And I think that's that's the power of, of, of a brand. Yeah, 100%. It's like the brand gives you that power in the marketplace, whether it's to charge higher prices or, you know, command market share. But I, I've used this example a few times before where it's like, you know, let's say Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, like actually to preface that, a lot of business owners, you know, small business owners will do organic marketing, like, you know, some outbound lead generation, connect with other people, seeing how they can add value and help, right? Let's say Gary Vee was to go and do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Hey, Owen, you want to come in and, you know, join my next program? Like, I know if he did, he didn't me, I'd be like, damn, like, where do I sign up, right? So it's like the brand kind of does the selling for you at a certain point, right? You don't, yeah. you're not out there having to, you know, pour yourself out and sell yourself. It's like people are coming to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's. I don't think that's that's. Uh, I would say that the pivoting point people are looking for, you know, that the moment you you can stop chasing people, and that people are coming to you. Mm-hmm. That that's like the ideal situation, you know. If you, once you reach that point, that that clients are coming to you or prospects are coming to you to work with you instead of you chasing them, you know, and trying to get them in. I think that's, that's, um, that's an ideal situation for a lot of entrepreneurs. So how would you say that, that PR would contribute to that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it just kind of serves the purpose of, it's a piece of the puzzle, right? It's, it's what, puts people on the pedestal and it gives that status right since you know the dawn of time resources are flowed to the people of high status and so i think with the elevation of the brand comes the elevation of the status so yeah i you couldn't just run a business just relying on you know pr alone so well actually some businesses can like if you're a skincare or you know beauty product that's just getting circulated around all those magazines then yeah you probably could but for most b2b kind of businesses it's yeah, a really essential piece of the puzzle to get to that next, next level. And actually on that, like just an example of the power of brand. So the other day, so our most successful client acquisition channel has been through cold email, believe it or not. Um, and so the other day, I saw an email that I got back from a guy and he goes, hey, Lewis, just checked out uh, you online, saw all your videos and your articles, really love it. Let's go, let's move forward, right? And so it's, it's always the indirect benefits, right? So you, if I reached out and like that guy, 
looked me up and couldn't find a thing about me. Like, oh, it's probably just some, you know, random person from another country or whatever. But because I had that there, he was like, wow, I like that. That was valuable. And yeah, he yeah. decided to move forward. Nice. And it's, 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 it's great because I also say that about your LinkedIn profile, right? If people meet you for the first time, you know, even when you're not active on LinkedIn, you know, if people meet you for the first time, they're going to Google you, right? And your LinkedIn profile will show on the first page. So mm -hmm. why not make sure that once they visit your LinkedIn page, your profile, that it should confirm that it's the right thing to contact you. You know, that's also, I would also say that that's part of your brand, you know, and I, I still oh, remember, future. I still remember um, maybe like seven years ago when I started my own business and I would Google my own name. I happen to have uh, a person in Belgium that has exactly the same name. So I oh, saw, no. so I saw some, 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 some hits from, uh, there was something for like a friends of Cuba. And I thought, well, I never done anything with that, you know, so how come? And then I recognized there is a Belgian gentleman that has the same, exact same name as I have. But when I Google my name nowadays, um, I'm all over the first page of Google, so to speak. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he's still out there, you know, I'm not looking for him. But I think that's the power of uh, of building your brand indeed and, and uh, being out there. You know, you don't want to be the best kept secret of the internet, right? Correct. Yeah, like you'd literally, one way that I kind of describe it too is you're just buying digital real estate there or building digital real estate. Like, you know, that guy used to rank for your name and now you've just taken that. It's, yeah, it's, I feel bad for people who have like a John Smith sort of name <laughs> where it's the most common name under the sun because yeah. good luck, you know, there's going to be some famous person, but. Yeah, it's, it's a really great point because these days people, I don't want to say are more skeptical than ever, but people do their research, right? If you reach out to them, yeah, they're going to look up and if they can't find anything, chances are they're not even going to think twice. And that first impression of like a really great LinkedIn profile, I think one of the really biggest underrated things is just professional photography. Like I know just like for myself, like when I started getting professional photos, like I'd always, not always, but I often get people say, oh, I really loved your photos and you can really tell the difference between like an iPhone camera and then like someone who's got like a full crazy lens that's longer than your arm. And like, you know, it's just those little one percenters, everything is a percentage of everything. And if, you know, an extra 3% of people that, you know, see your profile decide to actually, Hey, this is actually, you know, worth my time yeah. over the course of 10 years, that's going to be a lot of extra, you know, business for you. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, um, it's great to 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 see that that uh, the, it, it it seems like that more and more people are realizing the importance of, for instance, uh, a professional photo, you know, or even professional uh, brand. Um, so, if you could give a little piece of advice or tip, you know, for for the listeners on uh, maybe PR or building your own brand um, or maybe even about entrepreneurship, you know, the lessons you've learned uh, over the years, what would it be, uh, Louis? Yeah, on the PR and branding side of things, I think just to give some like practical advice, if someone wanted to go away and start getting on podcasts and getting in media and stuff like, you know, today, I would just focus so much on building relationships. So connect with different journalists, connect with different podcasts, so share their content, you know, compliment them on their work and don't ask for anything, right? Just keep adding that value. It's like the jab, 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 right hook method that Gary talks about. It's very cliche, but it works. And same in business too, right? Like I think building those relationships and connections, like it depends obviously on your business and the way you operate. But I think the more people that you can actually build a genuine relationship with, like I actually, I started doing this to another level. Like now I'm actually just like trying to meet as many people in person as possible because Zoom is great, but when you actually meet them in person, it's another level, right? You have that oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. human face-to-face -to -face touch and, you know, it just creates that affinity where you're like, you know, it almost makes it a no-brainer to work together when you have that level of commitment. So, yeah, yeah, I think really just focusing on, you know, humans and relationships and in every asset of the business. Oh, that's a great advice. It, was, and it, it, it kind of remembered me of, uh, I'm part of a professional network. And uh, during COVID, the, the whole live meetings went online. So, and, and, and some other entrepreneurs joined our, uh, uh, our community. 
And I remember when we had our first live meeting again, and there would be a guest that came to to watch my uh, presentation. And I was talking to one of uh, one other uh, entrepreneur, and in I just saw somebody entering the room, and I looked very fast and back again. And I thought, oh, that's the guest, right? And then I looked again, and I realized that it was one of the entrepreneurs that joined during COVID, uh, during the lockdown, but. I've never seen him uh, live, right? And I've never seen him in person. So because you're only seeing like this, this part of a person on Zoom, mm -hmm. you never know how tall or how small somebody is. So it was very mm -hmm. um, interesting to notice that, that uh, I thought he was bigger, you know, and he, he was uh, smaller than I am. But it's, it's, it's amazing what it does if you meet somebody in person for the first time. It's, uh, yeah, it, 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 really it makes does. a lot of difference. Yeah. My experience last week was on the opposite. He was so tall. It was insane. Because I'm six foot three. And the gentleman that I went and connected with, he, I reckon he's probably like six, five, six, six, which is, uh, yeah, I felt short. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. doesn't happen often. <laughs> no, exactly. But it's, it's, it's funny to uh, how that works, you know. Um, I think what, what you shared about, building relationships that's important in all all parts of your business you know whether it being with suppliers or uh, every stakeholder actually so would you say that being authentic helps in that sense yeah 100 percent. like authenticity is so key like it's really easy to mix the message and try and you know a lot of people just regurgitate other people's content and advice. And I, I was honestly guilty of that a few months ago. I was like, you know, I was trying to create three pieces of content a day and I would just run out of ideas. And so I kind of like, oh, what are these people saying? And I wouldn't do it verbatim, but I kind of take the concept and, you know, run with it. It's obviously valuable content, but at the same time, yeah. like I, I switched that whole frame to like, you know, not a like how to, but how I, right? So when you say how to be a millionaire, right? There'll be a, Half the people who say that are not a millionaire and they'll tell you that. So one, you just have no credibility on that. So you just won't land, right? The depth is just not there. But if you go, how I became a millionaire and you are a millionaire, then it holds a whole new depth in people's minds and it gives you so much more credibility. So I was like, you know, how I built my business from zero to this, right? How I was able to, you know, leverage software to scale our acquisition channel. And then I, you know, when you kind of come from that place, it's a lot more authentic and yeah, like, and aside from that too, just sharing like personal stories and anecdotes, I think they're the, the best way to show your authenticity because you know anyone can just say, oh, I've done this, I've done that. But when you actually share like a real life story of that, I think that's where you really get that connection and the emotion in there too. Yeah. yeah it's what one of my coaches also said, you know, effects tell, stories fail. And it's mm -hmm. true, you know, if you share a personal story or whatever story, then if people can associate with it, you know, they're more, more, uh, they're more moved by it, you know, and they tend to, to, to contact you uh, earlier or uh, sooner. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. No nice. doubt. So, um, Lewis, if people want to know more about you or more about Boost Media Agency or want to contact you, how can they do that? Yeah. The best place, either LinkedIn or Instagram, uh, Lewis Schenk is the name. I'd love to, love to connect with anyone who needs any assistance on, any kind of media PR stuff. We've got a ton of free resources too. So if you need any help, just uh, follow at me. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot, Lewis. I really enjoyed the conversation. I hope you liked it too. Uh, I think you're doing a great job, you know, um, looking forward how your uh, company will evolve uh, the coming years. Uh, are you still doing your uh, events uh, company as well? Or is it on a so low, uh, sold low level? Yeah, I sold 70% of that. So I've got a business partner who runs the whole thing. We just do like a fortnightly meeting just to kind of run through things, see what kind of things we need to focus on. We had a meeting last night actually with the ads guy. We're just tweaking all the ads. So yeah, just very mildly involved. But I like that. That's kind of where I see myself in the future is just building companies, removing myself from them and then building something else. Like I, I'd be so bored if I wasn't working. Like I love golf still, but I'm like, I couldn't play more than like three maybe four days a week max i'll just probably get bored so yeah i i really like just building things nice nice 
Well, I wish you best of luck, Louis. Uh, thank you for the conversation. Thank and let's keep in touch. Yeah, 100%. Thanks so much for the time.